Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here with two of my Ferraris. Uh, today I'm gonna tell you some things. I've been telling you why the Ferrari 360 is a good deal if you're shopping for a sports car under $100,000. Now I'm gonna actually help out and tell you things to look out for when purchasing one. Cause there are things that weren't designed very well, which are part of the car and you're gonna see it on virtually all the cars. And it's something that can either save you money or uh, save you the time and effort of knowing that's normal and you don't have to do anything to fix it. So come with me, I'll show you around the cars. I've got two cars here, so we have a sample size, so you can see it happens on both. All right, well, the first thing you want to look out for is the rolled fenders. Uh, rolling a fender on a Ferrari, pretty standard. Uh, this is standard wheel, factory wheel, factory size tire, but when you uh, take a, like an incline and the wheel is turned, it will, obviously, as you can see, waffle out the front fender. It's the same on both sides. Um, the simple fix, only a couple hundred bucks. You just roll the fenders. They've got a thing that they bolt on here and take the wheel off and literally roll it to tuck in this edge into the car. You'll never notice it. If you look on this car over here, you'll see it's actually been done and nicey nice. So that's a common thing. Uh, first thing to look out for. Next, since I'm right here, the mirrors. And this mirror is not so loose, but the mirrors tend to, this is a little loose. They tend to come loose on the cars. Um, it's a fairly common thing. Uh, these cars, as well, most Ferraris that I've dealt with have a lot of vibration in them. And, and part of it is, I, I don't know, it's just the engine mounts. Maybe they don't need to use tough enough ones. Maybe the engine, in order to get the ride they're looking for, they have to have super, I, I don't know, whatever it is that causes it. But these cars sort of shake themselves a lot. And the mirrors uh, on these cars, the 360 specifically, the 430s as well, uh, tend to rattle themselves loose. The problem is there's a little screw underneath it to tighten it. And after you tighten it until you can't tighten it no more, you really sort of have to replace the mirror. So that's a common thing to look out for. So Ferrari's obviously known for their leather works and, and the gorgeous look and smell of the interior. Uh, the leather, however, usually shrinks over time. And this isn't just a 360 problem. This is a problem that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, you'll see if you look at most of the cars where they have the sensor in the dash, you'll see the leather tugging away these window uh, the air vents for the air to come off and to frost the window usually always pop out because they break off because the leather ends up tugging you'll never get that super clean line with the stitching going across unless it's been redone uh, as it was from the factory you'll see a little uh, wrinkling on the airbag on the passenger side airbag all common things also and I, I think my seats on both of my cars are pretty good uh, you'll oftentimes see the side bolsters get pretty beat up and the leather will be discolored and worn away. That happens relatively frequently, especially when the car sees a lot of use. I saw it on every one of our rental cars really quickly within like 15,000 miles, the seats had to be redone because the uh, side bolsters get really worn from people flopping in and out. Also poorly designed are the door locks because the door locks in the winter time, they freeze. And I don't know if it's summer specific or not, but I've had both door locks fail on that 360. If you've seen some of the update videos on that, Last year after we did the clutch on this car, after I bought it, that door lock failed. So when we shipped it out to Denver, Colorado for the adventure drives trip, we had to climb in and out of the window. Luckily, Ferrari North America is only a couple of miles away from me where they have those in stock. I brought it out, gave it to the Ferrari dealer in Denver. They hooked it up, they got it in for me same day. Now, however, just today, this door opens just fine from this side, but it doesn't open from the inside. That'll make four. That'll make four of four door lock failures on my two cars. That's 100%. Every door lock fails, given my sample size. Now, the next issue to watch out for is convertible specific. They're not exactly watertight. What do I mean by that? Not perfectly watertight. How's that side doing? Yep, that side, same thing. And the windows are all the way up. Just Ferrari problems. That's not really watertight. Luckily, not a lot of water gets in. If you're washing your own car, you sort of pay attention to that. But it's just something that it doesn't form a perfect seal. Such is life. The sticky buttons are also a common problem. You'll get sticky buttons. Anything that's this black tacky, um, the black tacky thing, and so the vents, the radio buttons, 
the, uh, the cool air conditioning controls, the door handles, all of those things get very sticky. It's not really cheap to get them refinished, but there are companies like Sticky, Mo sticky No More that will do that. Uh, most people when they own a car will get that done so they don't have to worry about that anymore. Just something to look out for. So we've gone around the outside of the car. That stuff is all just wear and tear over time, being out in the sun, just, just Ferrari existing. That stuff sort of happens to the car except for the leather wear, whether it's moved or not moved. So that's all stuff to look out for. Now the engine itself, engine trans, all great. Uh, I've had very little problems over the years and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles on the 360 platform as rental cars and then, I mean, what, 10 or 15,000 miles between these two cars. Uh, the engines are usually great. They, you don't really have any problems with them. The, uh, the problems that you do have is that, I don't know what it was that I was talking about. There is a lot of vibration in the car and the um, manifolds will break from that vibration and the engine mounts and the transmission mounts will get worn out. So if you're looking for a car and you do a PPI, which is a pre-purchase inspection. You should do that on any nice car that you end up buying, at least a sports car. You do a PPI, have them look at the engine mounts, the trans mount, and then the, uh, the headers. Because when the headers crack, they're like $4,500 a piece. If you get them through Ferrari, if you just go on eBay or something like that, you can usually pick them up. Or there's a company like Fab Speed and Agency Power that makes aftermarket headers that you can put on in place of these. So that's it. I'm not trying to scare you away. I'm just trying to keep it real as to things to look out for. Uh, I have my two cars as, as sample size for, for the purpose of this discussion. I hope you guys learned something. If you're in the market, go look. Make sure you get a PPI. It's very important. Catch you next time. I hope you are enjoying the series, right? I hope you're like enjoying me owning them and maintaining them to see what it costs. Adios. See, the Ferrari Museum has all sorts of valuable cars, like the 550 Barrichetta, six speed which you'd expect them to use prime examples of. However, even this car in the Ferrari Museum has wear <laughs> on the seat bolster. Unreal, I wonder if there's sticky buttons too. No, those seem to have been taken care of. Come on, Ferrari. Take my money, please.